So now we have seen some examples of what are linear transformations. We've discussed why linear transformations are important, or at least hinted at it. Let's now formally define what a linear transformation is. We start with vector functions. And we're going to use the letter L here because we're going to talk about linear transformations. Okay, A vector function L is said to be a linear transformation if for all vectors x and y and for all scalars alpha, it's the case that transforming a scaled vector is the same as scaling a transformed vector. Mathematically, the way you say that is scale the vector x first by doing alpha times x and then transform it. Or you can transform the vector x first and then scale it. Also, it has to be the case that if you sum two vectors first and then transform, you get the same result as if you first transform the two vectors and then sum them. So it has to be the case that for all vectors x and y, you can sum the vectors first and then transform, or you can transform the vectors first and then sum. All vector functions that have both of these properties are called linear transformations. We've seen some examples. Rotation in 2D is a linear transformation. Reflecting in 2D is a linear transformation. You did that as an exercise. So let's look at some more examples. Okay. The transformation F that takes components chi0 and chi1 and transforms them into the vector chi0 plus chi1 as first component and chi0 as second component is a linear transformation. Okay, so how would we figure that out? What you need to do is be able to prove that if you take an arbitrary alpha in R and arbitrary vectors x and y, where we expose the components of x and the components of y, but it's very, very important that we make absolutely no assumptions about x and y, then we have to show that if you do alpha times x and then apply the function f to it, you get the same as if you first applied the function f to it and then scaled it by alpha. And f of x plus y is the same as f of x plus f of y. Well, you probably can just stare at this function right here and say, oh, of course. So what we need to do is prove it. How do we prove that? Well, first we have to show that f of alpha x is equal to alpha times f of x. How do you do that? You start with f of alpha times x. You expose the components of x. Now, last week you learned how to scale a, a vector. You get alpha times chi 0 for the first component and alpha times chi 1 for the second component. And then there's one more step. What you do is you take your alpha times chi 0, plug it into your function, take your alpha times chi 1, plug it into your function, and if you go back, this is the net result. Okay, why? Because f of chi 0 chi 1 was equal to chi 0 plus chi 1 and chi 0. Okay, and all we do here is we plug in alpha times chi 0 for chi 0 everywhere and alpha times chi 1 for chi 1 everywhere. Okay, the next thing that I do is I start on the right and I go through the same exercise. So alpha times f of x is the same as alpha times f evaluated at chi 0, chi 1. Now, I know what my function is and f of chi 0, chi 1 evaluates to chi 0 plus chi 1 for the first component, chi 0 for the second component, and the result of that we need to multiply by alpha. But you learned how to scale a vector. All you do is you scale the individual components. So you know that that's the same as alpha times the quantity chi 0 plus chi 1 for the first component and alpha times chi 0 for the second component. Now, if this is to be equal to that, then it now must be the case that that is equal to that. 
because this is equal to that is equal to that is equal to that is equal to that this is equal to that is equal to that and the only way this can be equal to that is if now this result is equal to that result clearly they are so we're in good shape and therefore we conclude that both alpha uh, f of alpha x and alpha times f of x evaluate to the same expression and therefore they are equal a lot of people like to present this as this is equal to that is equal to that is equal to that and then they would like to keep going okay now this is just the second argument on the earlier slide but backwards this is equal to that is equal to that is equal to that and if you put the two together then you get cleanly from the left to the right from the left to the right so what you may want to do is go through this argument first and then rewrite your proof as such okay but that's only half of it we also need to show that f of x plus y is equal to f of x plus f of y and we do this in exactly the same way we start by showing that f of x plus y is equal to this all we do there is we plug in x and y with the components exposed we know how to add two vectors together that gives us this and then we know how to take that vector plug the components into the function to get this right here so that's starting on the left and coming up with some expression now to keep going with this expression and get to the expression on the right uh, would take quite a bit of foresight sort of like a chess player looking several steps ahead but what you can do instead is work backwards you start with f of x plus f of y you plug in the exposed components you evaluate the function separately and then you know how to add two vectors together and you get this expression right here and if you compare that expression to this expression they are equal and therefore you conclude that this is equal to that because this is equal to that and then again you might want to rewrite that by first doing your argument starting on this side from here to here to here to here and then laying your argument for x plus f of x plus f of y backwards equal to that is equal to that is equal to that and then you get a smooth set of equalities that takes you from the left to the right so we conclude that the function f of chi 0 chi 1 that evaluates as such is indeed a linear transformation okay let's look at another example i claim that f of chi psi defined by this is not a linear transformation now notice that this time i decided to call my components chi and psi instead of chi 0 and chi 1 obviously these are just names and therefore everything should work anyway now how do we prove that well what we need to do is we need to come up with some example where scaling the vector first and then transforming it is not equal to transforming it first and then scaling or we need to come up with an example where adding two vectors first and then since transforming the result is not the same as transforming the two separate vectors and then adding the results of that later this week we're going to give you a foolproof way of actually answering this question in a very very systematic way at the moment we're just going to try a few vectors and see what happens so what if we take alpha to be one and chi and psi to be one one all we need to do is come up with one example that doesn't fit the definition of linear transformation and we're done well if you evaluate this right here then all you want to do is plug in alpha chi and psi and you get this right here if you then scale the vector you get this and then if you plug the one one vector into the function f you get that and then if you do some arithmetic you get that right there now if you look at alpha times f of chi psi with these values right here what do you get well you get this then you get this and you get this and you say ah wonderful f of alpha times x is the same as alpha times f of x 
for this example. Maybe it's a linear transformation. Well, just because it works for one example doesn't mean it works for all examples. So what you need to do is maybe try another one. Okay. What if we take a different alpha? We'll take alpha equal to zero. And we take chi inside to be the same as in the last uh, try. What do we get then? Well, if you work through it, this is equal to that, this is equal to that, this is equal to that, this is equal to that. On the other hand, if you evaluate f first, and then you evaluate f at 1, 1, you come up with a vector, you take that result vector and you multiply it by 0, and you get the 0 vector. And notice that these two results are not equal to each other. Ah, so we have found one example for which scaling the vector first and then transforming it is not the same as transforming it first and then scaling it. Therefore, this cannot be a linear transformation. We summarize that right here. Linear transformations are special vector functions that have the property that one can scale first and then transform, or transform first and then scale, and one can add first and then transform, or transform first and then add. Some vector functions are linear transformations, others are not. The homework for this unit will both help you build up some intuition and actually prove some facts about these kind of functions.